so thank you uh, uh, so in this talk today i'm going to talk about the implementation and comprehension of hardware based on filled programmable gate arrays for real time image processing so this topic itself we can understand that we are uh, the image processing uh, related to real time how we are going to implement image processing techniques with some of the hardware where we can get the real time uh, output we need not worry about to wait for longer time so as we will start with the first we need to talk about uh, first I, i'll talk about what is image and how we are going to process then finally we will see with the hardware implementation of the some of the image processing techniques actually this is the very um, uh, here it's a number of researchers also going on with this image processing and already with the hardware implementation so first let me talk about the digital image digital image is a two dimensional function it means as if you are talking about the signal signal is a one dimensional it means only x axis is present but whenever we are going to talk about the image image it means we are going to deal with x and y axis and here we are not going with the analog because some of the complexity we are going for the digital image processing digital image so generally if we will consider x and y axis so definitely we, if we are talking about the image some intensity must be there with that and that generally we will represent using that f f is either you can call an intensity or an amplitude of that um, uh, levels so uh, digital uh, now we need to talk about the processing and why it is very important for us if we are going for the processing so generally we can categorize into three categories one is uh, low second one is high and third one is your uh, second one is mid and third one is high level it means if you are working with the low level research it means you are just you are giving some input in terms of image and you are getting your output in terms of images itself if you are going with the mid level it means your outputs are like a morphological or inputs you are giving as a image output you are just extracting some kind of attributes like segmentation and something a uh, high level it means you are giving some object and in that object you are going to recognize with that object so it depends on your research which one you are going to work with that but definitely you will go for the real time implementation if you are going for the hardware implementation so the basic element of any image is called your pixel so generally we are going to deal with the pixels size the pixels so uh, just uh, in this uh, uh, figures you can just uh, see with that uh, uh, i have taken two images one is your gray scale image another one is your color image so gray scale image and color image gray scale image it means you are going to see with the eight bits it means only to, uh, your uh, uh, black and white is there that is called binary but if you are going to deal with the gray scale it means your three bits are there in between like some whiteness must be there with dominated by gray so here you if you will see with the pixel pixel it may, uh, may be your gray scale or maybe your color scale um, color so uh, generally we will categorize into gray scale binary or color image so color image it means the primary colors are your red green and blue and combination of these red green and blue you can get your different different colors but definitely pixels must be there with that and what is the exactly pixel if like this is the Im image you are taking from your camera or something so this is the clarity is very good but if you want to see the same image with the pixelated values so you can just zoom out zoom out longer so you can see the same image with the pixelated form and that represents in the two kind uh, two dimensional of image right um, it means x and y axis with some of the intensity so generally yeah if you are taking any images it means definitely we are going to use some camera either you are nowadays we are going to use the mobile phones also so the generally if you are using you are taking any images with the camera and you are going to process with it so whenever we are talking about the camera resolution so generally in if, if you will see with the your phones um that the cam, that is uh, if you are capturing the image through the camera and if you are talking about the camera perspective that is called a camera 
camera resolution. So the question will come, what is the resolution exactly? So res resolutions hold your detailed analysis of your image. It means what is the exact size of the image if you are capturing, right? So that mm, the minimum, if you will see, we will represent as a 1 million pixels or 1 megapixel. So if you are using 1 megapixel, to capture the image, the clarity is like this, which is not very clear about it, right? So the, if you are going to, uh, generally, if you are going to uh, capture any image with the different kind of megas, it means number of pixels you are increasing, like a five megapixel camera. So clarity would be very uh, good. Actually, it is more visible to the human being. If you are going to increase more and more, more um, uh, details about the image you are going to get. So that term is called your camera resolution. But if we are going for any research or you are going to talk about any Im image resolution, it means that image resolution is nothing. It's a, we will divide in X and Y. So 1280 into 720, if we we'll multiply approximately, we are going to get some kind of five megapixels. It means five million uh, values. And then we, we can represent as a five megapixels. So throughout, if mm, image related terms are there, we are going to talk about X and Y axis. So just so we will see how we can implement our image using a, a, a hardware, using a, a full programmable gate, uh, gate array hardware. So first, let me talk about what is exactly FPGA. And then we will see with that how we can integrate this image processing algorithm using our, uh, we can dump or we can just upload or load our code into the, uh, onto the FPGAs. So FPGA is a filled programmable gate array and it contains a million or 10,000 or more million numbers of your logic blocks. So generally, if we are talking about any image processing algorithm that contains your number of uh, mathematical terms and that mathematical terms are mostly related to a subtraction, addition, multiplication, division. So this uh, this term, we can easily, we can write code uh, using the uh, write code using hardware uh, description language that is called your uh, HDL or either you can use VHDL or Verilog. So generally, if you will see the FPGA, FPGA will uh, generally we will consider logic blocks. It means and and on multiplication, how many multiplications are there? Yeah, either we are going to perform any kind of addition. So in that term, we need to write our code and we can see with the number of in uh, IOS blocks are there. And uh, also you can say interconnects are there that will communicate. Uh, actually, we can say it's a communicate between the um, values, whatever we are giving. So that's why it's a very suitable for doing all kind of mathematical analysis. And then we can up, uh, we can uh, dump on any FPGAs or any hardware. So generally, why image processing and AIML also, we are going to work towards the more hardware side. So we can get real-time uh, results. And we can also do the ma manipulations with the mathematical analysis. So where FPGAs fit? Either uh, we can go with the software and hardware. If we are going for the software side, it's uh, inherently serial. It means one by one we need to transfer and definitely it will take time. And as we are going to see with the mathematical aspects also, so definitely it would be going to increase the time complexity. So generally hardware is the parallel parallel processing or when uh, you can uh, um, you can work with the number of modules at a time. So FPGA is very suitable to increase the performance. So that's why we are going for the image processing with this hardware and the dedicated towards the FPGAs. So FPGAs combine your speed of hardware and with the flexibility of software at a, at a very relative relatively low cost. So that's why we are uh, talking about image integrated with this FPGAs. So now the question will definitely come in the mind how we are going to integrate as image processing and also the hardware languages. So first, uh, uh, because it's very important to simulate your code using MATLAB or otherwise you can simulate your code using Python also. Then you can also design or simulate with your hardware description language, either it's a Verilog or VHDL. 
So first we will take like it's a Lena image, it's a generalized image I have taken and th these are the pixels. Mm, the pixel values generally if you are working with the MATLAB, it means we are going to uh, work with the matrix form. So this is the ro rows and column wise it is there. Then we are going to process with the MATLAB processing, we will see the output. The same time we are also going to need, uh, write a code using our VHDL and Verilog. Then we will compare the results. If it is a good, then we are going for the synthesis, placement and routing. Then we will finally see with the device programming. So as uh, just now I talked, uh, 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 MATLAB if we are using, that is nothing, it's a matrix form. And this is the form of image. Your 0, 0 indicates your X and Y, uh, uh, X and y axis. Generally, X we can represent into M. It means M cross N. M is represent like 256 and N is 256. It means 256 cross 256 image size is there. So you need to first form into the matrix form. And then you can go with the other manipulations. If you are going for the filtering design, either you are going for any image edge, edge detection or enhancement method or restoration methods. So here very simple example I have taken like we are going for the image addition. So here you can see some darknets are there. And I, now I am adding with uh, some pixels, like uh, 100 pixels, 200 pixels are there. I am adding with some kind of more addition with numbers. Like if I am adding 50, so definitely some kind of manipulations we are doing with that. And here you can see the brightness or contrast of the image also increase. So that comes under your image addition. It's a simple example. Either you can go with the subtraction, you can go with the any image restoration techniques. So how you can implement? So we uh, I have started with the MATLAB. Right. So any image, this is the uh, some uh, image I have taken and then you need to convert your image file to text file. That is important if you are using MATLAB and um, uh, any hardware language or you are going for FPGAs. So generally number of different methods are there. Most probably someone will tell you we will go with the MATLAB. We can go use that coders also HDL coder, but the complexity would be very high and if any errors are there we uh, generally can't find is easily we can't find where the exactly error and it's a generated code is there so it, it is a number of lines are there so better either you can perform this otherwise you can go with the some graphical representation and then you can go for the hardware implementation so first we need to convert any image file to text file and this is the code uh, actually this code is available also otherwise you can take from here and you can also convert your file to text file then your hardware languages as we are going to do that so uh, we need to go for the decimal to binary conversion and we some of the syntax are there where we can use this reshape and decimal to binary if it is the different data sets are there you can utilize this one and you can also change either it's a hexadecimal or what, how you are going to process it depends on that so decimal to binary or hexa is there otherwise directly you can upload the file also it is there right so this is the part of your matlab where you are going to check the, do the conversion then you are going to use your store data into the hardware side now we are going so we are going to uh, upload a load our um, uh, pixels values or the data values using brap in and and then we will see with the output brap so generally clock resets are there and we need to give the address also where we are going to process the data. So generally we need to initialize the memory. So memory is that because we are calling and we are going to store the values there. So these are some of the syntax are available for very long if you are going with the VHDL also. Syntax are there for the read and write operations. So first we need to read the operation, where, what is exactly our file name, where we can start with the memory, start address and stop address. These are some of the uh, uh, things we need to be very careful whenever we are going to, up, uh, to upload our image uh, in the form of data. So this is the VRAM in, it means, right, if it depends on you, what is the size you are going to use for the image. Uh, as just now in this block, we have seen with the clock, 
reset and output is your 8 bit uh, 8 bit output then pixel out uh, pixel out i have given the name then you are going to store into the reg and depends on the positive clock or negative reset you are going to generate your output if not then you are going to process with your addition operation image addition with the, whatever the values you are giving it's a 50 100 you need to write in a binary form Right, and you have to uh, execute or uh, you have to perform till less than 4095. It depends on your size of the image. Right, so this is the VRAM in where we are uploading our image uh, data after MATLAB. Right, and then also you can process it and you can see with the output of this image addition and then you can compare your output with the simulation using MATLAB, either simulation using Python or anywhere simulation and or your hardware simulation also you can compare. Then next you can go for the synthesis and uh, other parameters. So generally, if you will see with the image processing, uh, why we are going for the FPGAs because it's a reconfigurable and image processing mathematical calculations are more and more. So sometimes we need to go for the reconfigurable things also. So that's why we need to go, uh, if we are going with the FPGAs, we are going to see with us uh, even faster. And each block is independent to each other. And parallelly, we can also implement our algorithm and uh, because this hierarchy is there, that's why we are going to get very faster output and we can see with the output results quickly with the uh, with the other softwares, whatever available for uh, for executing our image processing algorithm. So benefits of FPGAs are uh, say improved in both latency and throughput. As we are talking about the hardware, we need to check with this latency and throughput. Achieve uh, we can achieve a lower clock speed but lower power also, and efficient in uh, real pro uh, real time processing because we are going for the parallel execution and reconfigurability is there with that FPGAs. That's why we are going to choose with this FPGAs. FPGAs and we can integrate with the any image processing algorithm and we can write a code and we can see the output. Thank you.